Thanksgiving hasn't even happened yet. Oh my gosh, look at this. That's so exciting. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And this video is going to be somewhat of a fix in the freaking timeline errors vlog and also somewhat of probably just me banging my head against my desk and also <laughs> other super exciting things. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell by my tone, but I'm on page 68 of my read through. Not my read through per se, but like my read through so that I'm specifically focused on timelines and errors and inaccuracies and inconsistencies and all that super fun stuff. Now, before I get into all of those super fun things, I should say that Project Purple is a freaking blast. As frustrating as it is to be going over timeline errors, I really love this book. I think this book is so fun. It is very entertaining if I can like just toot my own horn. It's great. I mean, it's not great. I'm trying to make it great. <laughs> but of course, to make it great, I really do have to slog through these timeline errors. And this is the part of revision that I just, that really tries me, you know? Now, like I said, I'm already on page 60, which means that I have been doing this for a while. You'll have seen it in other vlogs already, but I figured I, this would just be the continuation of that, of this story. Yeah, let's get to it, I guess. So my goal for the day is actually to get to page 100. Let's see, maybe, maybe that's page 99. I just need one more, page 100, which is like this much thick of story. And I actually only have 173 pages and like, really like 172. <laughs> so if I can get to 100, I will be over halfway. And that would be very exciting. So here is the progress I've already made. I'm gonna move my drink out of the way. Also, my Camp Nanorama mug out of the way. <laughs> so <laughs> a whole bunch, I'm trying to figure out the days that this happens on. So like the starting day is day one of the story and then I'll put the date and then I need to figure out chapters. As you can see the chapter title, I'm still trying to work out if I want chapter titles or not. If you read a lot of nonfiction or even like autobiographies or biographies, there's usually chapter titles. It's not just like chapter one. And because this story is my main character writing the book, I feel like I need to have chapter titles. It mimics an autobiography, an autobiography of a not real person, but still. <laughs> so that's something I'm gonna have to cover at some point in this process. The other thing I've been doing is I write down what each of the scenes is and then I have other fixes needed and also reference. So I have like, do, 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 let's see, five hours, two days, one week, get to hospital reunited, released. So somewhere in the context of the book, I had a part that said it took her five hours, two days and one week to get out of the hospital, be reunited with her dad and be released from the hospital. So my timeline has to match up with those things because I explicitly state it in the story. There are a lot of things like that where I'm like, it, in the two weeks since initially being kidnapped or whatever. And so this is where my timeline errors really kick in is because I'm leaving these little, weaving these little droplets of context into the story, but then the context was a little bit wrong. It was the wrong context. It wasn't right. <laughs> Look at you Thanksgiving. And then other fixes needed are things like uh, she got shot and she has a scar on her forehead. And like, you know, there's a shirtless scene mentioned on a page number X, but there's never actually any shirtless scene in the book. D do you have any figures not broken? Did I cover that? That's what I'm talking about. Like little things, especially as I was realizing today on my um, live write-in, I... <sighs> I have both Prince Augustine and Jenny go through a lot of injuries in this book, but never do I, I, I don't know that I ever actually like figured out which injuries belong to which person other than that Prince Augustine gets a worse deal of it. So I think I misattributed certain injuries to certain people and that's just not gonna work for the entirety of the book where a lot of it is like Jenny's on crutches and Prince Augustine now has to walk with a cane for the rest of his life or whatever. Like I just gotta make sure that their injuries match up with the recovery and whatever else. Why is this so hard? I guess that means it's just time to turn back to page 68 and get this ish done. Let's go. <laughs> Honestly, setting this camera up on a time lapse has been like my saving grace for stuff when I don't wanna do things. So like I've already been working on this today and I already worked on this yesterday and the day before that. And so now it's just like, ugh. This is the part of rereading that's like not that exciting because I have to look for the things I've done wrong. <laughs> Why can't I just be perfect the first time? Okay, I'm gonna put you on a thing and then we're gonna time lapse this ish. Woo. I 
I am now on page 80. Things are starting to get a little bit more confusing in the timeline because rather than having specific time periods, it's like she had to stay home for a week for recovery, but I don't actually say a week, I just say she had to stay home for a while. I, in my head, know it was a week, but like that's never really addressed in the story. And then I get to the point, so what happens is that I then have to put like, okay, we were on day 13 in the story, now there's a question mark because that, and then at some point she goes to school, and then we add the day at the school, that scene is the same as the school day, and then that's... The next scene is three days on top of what those were. Look at this. This is just... The problem has started. Blah. <laughs> but, you know, page 80. I'm getting close. With only 20 pages left, I think that means I can actually, like, achieve this goal for the day. So I'm really excited. So close! So close! Okay, I'm only on page 84 now. But what I'm realizing is... Okay, I'm reading this. So my main character's name is Jenny. She still doesn't have a last name, as I realized on the live stream today. <laughs> Forgot I didn't come up with one. But for a long time, I questioned that name. Now I feel totally fine with the name Jenny. The problem. <laughs> the problem is, as I'm getting to this, is that I have these characters, Tristan and Terry, and they play like a, they're very minor characters, but then the best friend's name is Christy. Here's where I personally just start to feel a little bit particular about names as someone who's like terrible at naming things. But like there are too many names in that that end in E, Jenny. Christy, Terry, that's too much. And actually, I think even just having Jenny and Christy in a lot of the same scenes together is just no. But I'm, I love the Jenny name. I've come around. So th I think the clear answer is to change the Christy name, which I'm totally fine with. Still need to give her last name. Ah, great. And I do like keeping Tristan and Terry, their twins. Why not have them both have T names, you know? Because that's how all twins work. <laughs> so, ugh, man, page 84. Uh, slow but steady progress. That's what I have to tell myself. It is 4.02 right now, and I'm honestly just hoping that I can finish everything up before Game of Thrones and that I can get a walk-in before then. So, fingers crossed. Back to it. <laughs> hooray! Hooray! I did it! <laughs> I'm so excited. Now, okay, <laughs> here's something I'm realizing. So again, y'all remember I had all those question marks and like, same as this and same as whatever and like, how do I add this up? Well, if I zoom out, the beginning of this is a Florida November. Now if I go to about 13, I think this is like an extra week, so that's the 20th. This at some point is plus 14. If the math added up, we would be into December and like not even, oh no. Like it would probably be mid-December, honestly. If I could add all of this up, if I had a better idea for what those question marks are, it would be mid-December. The problem, of course, is that Thanksgiving hasn't even happened yet in my book. So clearly my beta reader was right in some respects that that early timeline was just totally effed. Like, too much has happened for it then to be Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay. The plan, the plan, as of right now on page 101 of my reread is that I'm going to use Thanksgiving as an anchor point still, but then I'll backtrack everything else backwards and then everything forward and figure it out from there. I also, that means I probably need to add Halloween as some event, but that could be useful. I cover uh, Christmas winter time when Jenny actually goes to Martellona. <sighs> oh man, the timelines are so hard, why? I regret having those snacks while I was revising. It was a mistake. <sighs> Oh my gosh. So I know that I said yesterday my goal was going to be to get to like page 136, but actually my goal is going to be to get to page 150 because I still want the day that I'm done to be 
on Tuesday so I want to leave as little amount left of reading as possible because what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna try and get on like one of those timeline creation apps that I've never used before and see if I can't use one of those to like drag and drop some of these things or I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to do something so oh I might have to actually just draw out a timeline myself All right onward we move go whatever all right we have the first mention of the mess that turns out to be thanksgiving let's see it was on page 118 it's thanksgiving break i said and i know all that has to happen in between now and the last time i mess up thanksgiving because i have her have like an event just after thanksgiving and it's so far away <laughs> There's so many scenes left. Page one fifty. I did it. Ta da. Focus. Ta da. <laughs> oh man, we're getting to like the really cute fun parts of the story. I mean, I only have like 23 pages left, so you would hope so, but it's heartwarming after all of this time of her going through some real crap to like have each scene in its own way end on a really positive note, even if it's like a realistic positive, if that makes sense. So, okay, oh, now I gotta just finish filling in the last little bit. Look at all of the scenes. <laughs> Something else that I don't think I noticed in my first reread is that her physical therapy, she's never actually going through physical therapy, even though I talk about it at the start that she needs it and mention it at the end. It's never actually shown or discussed again. So that's going to have to change. And then also page 142, first mention of Augustine's mom, which I've talked about is just like not going to work. So I still have to figure out what exactly I want to do with the mom because I have some scenes to add in to the end here. I, <sighs> mm, I don't know what I want to do yet. I still don't know, I guess. I was about to say I knew, but I don't know. I need like a pros cons list. <laughs> but for today, I can consider this part done. Yay! So the other thing this reread and timeline stuff is helping me on is that I'm attempting to write a screenplay based off of Project Purple. So now that I'm going to have each of the scenes kind of designated out, I can see what's going to fit and how I want to basically translate it. No, what's the word? Not transfer, not change to adapt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can see how I want to adapt it for the screenplay format. I don't actually need the research I was attempting to do on it, or at least this, this is not the research I want. So I'm going to go return those to the library. Ta-da! So while in the car, I actually had an epiphany on what I want Jenny's last name to be. <laughs> And it's not that I actually know what I want the last name to be so much as that I just want her last name to be a hyphenated one because I was thinking about the characters and I can just see both of her parents wanting that. So yeah, that's, that's a nice epiphany to have. I feel like it doesn't answer exactly what the names are gonna be, but you know, it's more than I had before. <laughs> it's a hint. I guess actually this means I now have to come up with two names, but. <laughs> All right, so it is the next morning and actually I finished my reread. <laughs> I'm doing a, another experiment simultaneously with this. That's I tried writing like author and tubers for a week and so while I was mimicking Ginger Reed's lady, I, I finished. So now the only thing to do is figure out what kind of timeline resource I want to use. Okay, so I'm debating something. This is Aeon Timeline. I have heard amazing things about it, but it is something that you have to buy for like $50. I'm trying to conceptualize if spending the $50, how often I would use it. And now, because of course I have timeline errors every time, I could imagine this being so helpful, especially as I'm looking to other stories and series in the future. 
but also it's like $50. So <laughs> no, what do I want to do? Okay. They have a trial. I was sitting here thinking how I didn't want to have to basically draw out 64 individual scenes to try and figure out where they're at. So <laughs> we're gonna do the free trial and we're gonna see how it works. And if not, I can always do pen and paper if I have to. All right, to start your free trial on Macro Mondays, just download the application, use the links to your left. Okay, I'm ready. Ooh, it's downloading. And timeline, here we go, okay. I will agree to whatever. <laughs> Good principle to have, you guys. Just agree to whatever. You have 20 days remaining in your trial period. Alrighty, continued trial. Whoa, okay. We're fiction. Choose. Holy crap, okay. Title, color, ooh, I can color code them. Start, duration, and yes. Yes. Okay. Scrolls. This is so cool because then you can add in. Look at that. Participant observer arc. Shut up. Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 <laughs> so I'm going to add event. Oh my goodness. Yes. All right. I'm actually going to go and get my dual monitor and then that way I can have my Excel spreadsheet out here and this one out here. And yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so what I think I'm actually going to choose to start adding in at around the 53-54 scene mark. Oh wow, oh okay, this is cool. You can choose to do year only or month and year only. We're gonna just go ahead and it doesn't matter to me that it's 2020 because I just need a time period and then I know Thanksgiving is always on Thursday. So we're gonna say it's gonna be an early Thanksgiving this time. Yay. Okay, look at that. Ah, a duration. Oh my gosh, okay. So they have the duration and the end date, which is super helpful because in this scene that actually covers the after chunk of Thanksgiving is just my character kind of spiraling downwards a little bit. So you guys, this is so cool. I'm, after having played with it for all of two seconds, I think I'm probably gonna end up buying it. We'll hold off my judgment until I get to see what the timeline actually looks like, but. I'm ready. Also, how cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that my participant in this is Jenny, and then you do get to put observers, which, oh, did I not add it? Oh, I didn't create it, maybe. Mm, interesting. Okay, so I should have done that first. Things to know. Realistically, for my story, that doesn't really matter, but I can see, actually, so like in my pirate novel, when I had timeline errors last time, I could see just how helpful that would be to know who knows what, who's aware of what, since it's like vaguely heisty. I can totally see how this would help a whole lot more with fantasy books or like more high concept stuff than mine. I just happen to always need help with timelines. So in that scene, she skipped the after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving party. And then on that Wednesday, she didn't eat anything. On Thursday, she did a Harry Potter marathon. So then that weekend is when our next one takes place. So I can choose that. And it's gonna calculate. Ah, oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, ooh, I could even add a location. Should I have auto-populated that first too? The answer is yes. <laughs> but we're gonna add event. Ah, oh, beautiful. I think I'll probably change the color for like the different arcs that I think she's gone in. Let's see, how do I add entity? Add entity. Character arc place. Let's go ahead and add a character. Oh my gosh, okay. Event, offset, date. I just need the name. Jenny. So event one. Ooh, I could probably rename it. And then value. Look at that, you can add a summary. Roles, participant, Jenny. Yeah, look at that. Okay, very cool. I've also, I thought I saw something about how you can bring your Scrivener into this. I'll have to double check if that's true, but for now I'm just gonna do it this way so that I can piece it out in my own brain, especially because though I have the scenes listed like this, the Scrivener file and the printout was never actually pulled out in chunks like this. It was more chapter focused. So this will be interesting to see if I do end up buying this, how my writing changes in the future, even just how I use Scrivener. Hmm, okay. I'm just gonna get to work adding that stuff in. <laughs> So 
So I basically have, I have a good chunk of it done. Now I'm at a point where I have this question mark plus question mark because basically there's some recovery time needed before she even considers going to school and I just didn't decide how long that would be. But look at how beautiful this timeline is right now. Look at how cool this is. Like, wee. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do instead is I'm now going to work on the back end of the timeline because it's a little bit less confusing on the time period that I need to figure out so I can still include some stuff. Especially because I mentioned like the end of the semester sort of thing. So that is in some ways another anchor point that I can use. And I think that'll help me backtrack and bridge a couple more of those question marks. So yeah. I'm debating using a different color once I get to Martellona and once I get to like the early end of when they're kidnapped and in the hospital. So just a little bit more to do though. Like that's so exciting. I am gonna get breakfast though and then I will be back. All right. I did get a little bit added while I was waiting for my grilled cheese to cook. You guys, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight those and guess what? I did it, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> so, oh my gosh, look at this timeline go. Most of this has been fully figured out. I did have some clarification on a couple things that I think I've pulled. Uh, the first thing, when I backtracked the timeline, it's actually on a Saturday that they're kidnapped. And obviously, like, that's just not gonna work because Jenny and Christy are skipping school so but I can make it that Friday and then I think that would actually help some of the timeline in this like weird first leg but the biggest thing to note is that I <laughs> look at this okay I originally say it's a Florida November in my reread that is what I have in the story which makes sense on why it's so confusing to then have Thanksgiving be all over the place because do you see how far I had to backtrack this that's September y'all that's September <laughs> so I had just thoroughly messed up the timeline and I actually think this is I think it'll be more fun now that I have the timeline figured out because she ended up basically missing just so much school and then by the time that she does attempt to go back to school actually closer to November. Let's see, when do I say that she tries to go back to school? Look at my timeline. She goes to school for the first time October 19th and then she just like basically is never able to try again because of the reporters and the media and all sorts of the attention. Um, but oh my gosh, okay, anyways. <laughs> It's really funny to see just how thoroughly I messed that up, but also the fact that, you know, the story itself is still good and fine, even with the timeline errors. Like, obviously, the timeline isn't what makes a story a story. Oh my gosh, it just feels so good to, like, have that almost figured out. Man! How exciting! And then I think next I'll tackle the inaccuracies that I already made a little table for. And then add in those two scenes that I think I want toward the end. So yay. Yay, 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 yay. <sighs> this is so exciting because I feel like I'm getting so close to things. All right though, I think that's going to be it for this video. Now that I have the actual timeline sorted, the I'm gonna have to make the changes obviously in the actual, you know, story. Make sure that it all makes sense and I will add the extra events and scenes into my timeline after. But I think Man, I am so close to done with this one. That's so exciting. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please do comment down below and let me know how you go about fixing timeline errors. Do you use any kind of like software to help you out with that? Do you ever actually have timeline errors or are you really good about I have to wonder if you already had an outline before you started writing, if that would like just not be a problem you have. So, cause clearly that's not what I do. <laughs> but yeah, just let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon at the new video. Bye. It's frustrating. So I know I said yesterday that my goal was gonna be <clears throat> to, did I mess up my